If you're thinking of Big Sky Montana to ski or board, here are some of the pros and cons. Pro number one is the size. Big Sky is huge. It's the third largest resort in North America, second largest in the U.S. Just take a look at the trail map. With 38 lifts and seven terrain parks spread out over four mountains, there's a lot to explore. Big Sky has a vertical drop of 1,325 meters and 5,850 skiable acres. The slopes are 60% advanced to expert terrain. That leaves only 40% as beginner and intermediate, the bulk of which is under the tree line. But before you say, only 40% beginner and intermediate? Big Sky is not for me. Think about it, 40% of 5,800 acres is 2,300 acres which means that the beginner and intermediate terrain at Big Sky is larger than the entire mountain at a resort like Aspen, Telluride, or Taos. So you'll find plenty to enjoy at Big Sky. There are also bump runs and other challenging terrain below the tree line. Along with the terrain parks and cool natural features that you can find and explore no matter what's your level. Above the tree line is where expert skiers and boarders may be most happy because challenging coolers and chutes are accessible either directly from the lifts or with a short hike. And there's plenty of extra steep terrain. So if you want to hit a place where you're going to have tons of terrain of all different types, Big Sky is it. It's truly a mega resort. Pro number two is Lone Peak, which is visible from pretty much everywhere. It's home to the famous Big Couloir, a triple black diamond slope with a more than 1,000 meter vertical drop and an initial steepness of 50 degrees, something hard to find in bounds at any resort. The Lone Peak is the highest scenic overlook in Montana. You can see three states, Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho. But to get to the Lone Peak, you have to take three lifts, Swift Current, Powder Seeker, and then the Lone Peak Tram, which opened almost 25 years ago and expanded the expert territory of Big Sky by three times, and it's the overall territory by 50%. The Tram opens the door to black, double black, and triple black slopes. But if your ultimate goal is to hit the Big Cool Bar, you're required to carry an avalanche beacon, shovel, and probe, and check in with a ski patrol at the top. Only two people are allowed down the Big Cool Bar every 15 minutes. It can cost over $300 to get your backpack with a beacon and shovel. So no backpack with beacon or shovel means you got to go down the front side. That will still give you the full range of options of single to triple black diamond slopes. Whatever path you take, your experience on the Lone Peak will probably make Big Sky one of the most memorable trips you've ever had. The easiest way down is Liberty Bowl, which is obviously very steep, but also pretty wide. It may not look that steep on camera, but one guy fell and slid what seemed like 40 stories worth of length to help him get his ski. Uh, fortunately, he wasn't hurt. But then it was a hard time putting it on because the slope was so steep. If you go to Lone Peak, be careful about how steep it is. Con number one is the lift lines. With so much to offer, Big Sky draws a lot of people. And like many resorts, it can get pretty crowded, particularly at the base in the morning. But the crowds are not just limited to the base. At any time of day, the Lone Peak Tram tends to have an hour long wait, so you gotta be prepared for that. And an hour is just the minimum, mainly because the tram only carries 15 people at a time on the four minute ride, and there are just two trams. Big Sky is aware of the issue, and in 2022 will experiment with an add-on fee for access to the tram. So if you want to head up to the top, be prepared to pay extra. But don't worry, you can still find plenty of lifts with no lines. Pro number three can potentially help you with the long lines. There are multiple bases. Given its size, it's not surprising that Big Sky has four bases. If you arrive in the morning and think it's too crowded, you could always try your luck the next morning at a different base. Con number two is the lack of a defining town. So many winter resorts across the U.S. and the world have a central town offering shopping, places to eat and drink, 
and just generally to share experiences with others when you're off the mountain. Big Sky? By comparison, it doesn't seem to have one. Big Sky may be better described as a collection of accommodations with the necessary markets scattered about. Don't expect to head off to a bustling town center for apres ski activities. Con number three, lack of convenient flight options. Direct flights are available from over 10 cities to Bozeman, Montana, the closest major airport to Big Sky. However, the arrival times don't lend themselves to an easy weekend trip. You arrive in the morning or afternoon rather than on a Friday night with a return on a Sunday night. Maybe this is because there's no major central town near Big Sky, but either way, you'll likely have to devote two full days to travel. This may actually be a good thing for keeping away excessive weekend crowds, but it does take Big Sky off the table for a quick weekend getaway. Pro number four, Uncle Dan's Cookies. They're local cookies from a company that's based in Bozeman, Montana, but they're all over the mountain. Pretty much everywhere you go, every restaurant you can buy, all sorts of flavors, ginger, chocolate chip, and then all sorts of interesting exotic flavors. And there are even huts all over the mountain that sell them. Pro number five, Big Sky is committed to the environment. As of January 2021, Big Sky Resort has zero carbon emissions. They do this by purchasing renewable energy credits. You also need to be completely clean energy by 2030. So if preserving the environment where you ski and snowboard is important to you, then Big Sky is right up your alley. Jason and Beans. Hey, you.